Hi there, it's Kaylee from Crochet Unraveled, and today I wanted to show you the difference between crocheting rows versus crocheting in the round. Sorry if you hear some tipper tapping in the background, that's <laughs> just my dogs walking around. Um, okay, so crocheting in the round versus crocheting in rows. So first I want to show you something that I made very cute <laughs> it was at the request of my fiance and I found this pattern on Etsy so I made this little beaker guy all I need to do is sew some buttons on for his jacket but otherwise he's done if you like the Muppets this is a really fun one to do but I wanted to show you this because I crocheted both in the round and in rows to make this so just as a quick overview crocheting in the round that means you're crocheting your stitches in a circle okay so for instance for his head I started at the very top here it's under his hair and you can't see now but I just crocheted around and around and around in circles it was the same thing for his nose. You can see right where I started there. His eyes, even these pupils, and his legs, and then a few other items on his body. I also crocheted in rows for his jacket. So when you crochet in rows, you basically go one direction, and then you do a chain or a couple of chains, then you turn your work and you crochet back the other direction so I just wanted to show you this this is a practical application of crocheting in the rounds and crocheting in rows crocheting in the rounds <laughs> crocheting in the round one <laughs> singular and I just wanted to show off my cute little guy that I got here <laughs> all right so I'm going to demonstrate each of those so I'm gonna crochet in the round and I'm going to crochet in rows. Let's start with rows first. Let me just bring this back down a little bit. Okay. So typically when you crochet in rows, you're either going to start with a chain or a foundation stitch of some kind. And I'm going to do some tutorials on the foundation stitches later on this month. So you can watch those videos and find out how to crochet without having to start your row or without having to start your project rather um, with a crochet or with a chain. She's a Louisa. I can't talk right now. <laughs> okay, so we are just going to start with a slip knot here. I'm gonna insert my hook and I'm gonna start with my chain. Let's chain 11. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. And when I use a chain to start my projects, when I'm crocheting in rows, I like to do it pretty loose because that will prevent your project from being narrow and too tight at the bottom and then kind of growing outward. So it's okay to do these a little extra loose, a little bit looser than you think. And then all we're going to do is crochet back the other direction. Um, your pattern will tell you what type of stitch you need to be using. Let's just go ahead and do a single crochet going back the other direction. So I'm going to start in the second chain from my hook. So this is the first chain. Here's the second one. I'm going to insert my hook and just do my single crochet stitch. If you haven't learned how to do all of the basic crochet stitches, make sure that you watch my video that just came out about the five uh, foundational crochet stitches that you need to learn to crochet just about anything. It's kind of similar to when you learn how to play the guitar, <laughs> where they say that you just need to learn about three chords and you can play most any song. Well, it's similar to that. So. When you learn those five crochet stitches that I teach in my video, then you will be able to crochet just about anything and follow just about any pattern. 
anything that you don't know, you can pretty much find on the internet, whether it's on my YouTube page or somewhere else. A lot of stitches are just a variation of those five stitches that I teach you in that video. All right. So I've just done a single crochet stitch going all the way down my chain. And from here, what we're going to do is start our second row. So the chain does not count as a row unless you do one of those foundation crochet stitches. So if I did a foundation single crochet stitch, that would have been my first row. But if you're just starting with a chain and then crocheting into that chain, the chain does not count as a row. When you go back the other direction doing stitches, that is your first row. So we're gonna go ahead and learn how to move on to a second row. Let's just do a row of double crochet now. So I'm going to chain two. I like to chain them kind of tightly to keep those edges nice and straight. And then what you're going to do to change directions when you're crocheting in rows is just flip your work over so you are going back the other direction. And I'm just going to do some double crochet stitches going this way. Now if you already know how to do this part, you can go ahead and just skip on over to crocheting in the round section over and I'll put a little marker at the bottom there where you can click it and just go right to there if you want to learn what crocheting in the round is and how to start that. But basically this is really simple. You're just going to go back and forth, follow the instructions of the pattern that you're following when you are turning. Um, how many chains to make at the beginning, etc. Basically, there we go. That is the first two rows. So that is what crocheting in rows looks like. All right, here's a little swatch that I made. That's just crocheting in rows. So it's just back and forth. It's as simple as that. Now let's go ahead. We're going to just pull this out really quickly and then I'll show you what crocheting in the round is and how to start that so I'm just going to start with a magic circle or a magic ring if you don't know how to make this um, you can go ahead and watch my video on crush or making a magic circle okay so I'm just going to do my little loop here pull up loop and then do my little twist and to secure it, we're going to chain one. I like to pull it down nice and tight, and then it's like a little knot, and you can unravel the end there. Okay. So this is a magic circle. You can make it bigger or smaller by pulling on the end here. But essentially, to start crocheting in the round, you're going to put your first round of stitches into your magic circle. So what that looks like is this. Let's do a round of double crochet stitches. So chain two. Instead of putting our hook into the foundation chain or the row below, we're going to put our hook into that magic circle there. You kind of have to hold on tight and make sure it doesn't in on you <laughs> and then we're just going to repeat that until we have enough stitches however many it calls for this is how you will start things like a granny square or like beakers <laughs> orange nose there are a lot of different applications of working in the round all right And I'm not doing any certain number of stitches here. I just wanted to show you what it looks like when um, you get started using this technique of crocheting in the round. Okay, so that's probably enough. 
And right now it looks like a half circle or a rainbow or something like that, but all you're gonna do to make it round in a circle is pull your end taut. And then you will finish that first round just by slipping, slipping, <laughs> just by slip stitching into that first chain that you made. All right, there's your, your first round of round, round of round, your first round crocheting in the round. Everything is round. <laughs> All right, and then all you would do from here is just chain. If you are going to continue doing double crochets, you would chain two and then and then follow whatever directions are in your pattern. Um, I don't know why that was so hard. <laughs> Often you'll crochet two in each stitch or something along those lines. If you're increasing out and you want your circle to become bigger. But if you are crocheting something like a basket, let's say, and at the base of your basket, you crocheted in the round, kind of like I'm showing, and you've done enough rounds now that the base of your basket is as large as you want it to be. So now you want to make your basket go up this way. In that case, you would not increase anymore. You just crochet one stitch in each stitch around and that will make your next round go up because it's the same size, it's no longer growing out. So I hope that makes sense. Um, I'm not sure how else to explain that, but I can show you a basket that I made and maybe that will help if you <laughs> are unclear. So let me just grab that really quick. All right, so this is a basket that I made. I am just using it to hold little scraps right now, so I'll take those out. Um, and as you can see, I used a technique similar to what I was just showing you and I continued to grow and add stitches when I wanted the basket to be larger. And once I got to the width that I wanted it to be for the bottom, then I just kept crocheting in rounds still. But instead of increasing the number of stitches in each row, I just did one stitch in each of the stitches in the previous row. And that caused the basket to go up and up like that. And here's my cute little basket. It has these little baubles on it, and it's a really, really nice looking piece. You can do it in any color and store whatever you need to in it. You could put a little plant in there. You could put your little yarn ends like I have. Um, throw your rings in there, your keys, anything like that. But that's a really easy way to make a basket. And I don't know how I got off on this ta tangent. <laughs> on a basket DIY. But anyways, that is all I have for you today, I believe. And I, I really hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got something out of it. And now you understand the difference between crocheting in rows versus crocheting in the round. And I would love for you, if you are a crochet lover or you are really starting to learn and get into it, then make sure that you subscribe to my channel and head on over to crochetunravel.com. Join my email list where I send out all the tutorials that I've created. All my tutorials are free on there and I just love having you here. So I hope you have a great rest of your day and happy crocheting.